Uh, welcome again to another class that I have this week. This class is all about mindsetting and uh, when it comes to comparison. I'm going to be talking about the pros, the cons, the mindset, and there's a little bit of homework at the end of it. Something that just benefits you more than anything else is just trying to like get um, a game plan on how you want to improve. And even by looking at other people's artwork, you can see what you want to add into your own type of style or whatever, or whatever way you want to go with your art. And um, moving on from the tables, I'm gonna start talking about the pros. So um, I do a lot of comparison. Uh, I would, I, I used, I, I went through all, all the emotions of comparison when it comes to um, just going on art station, like just wanting, to, wanting to know what does it take for me to get hired, and looking at the caliber of work that I need to do. Um, and I experienced a lot of pros out of this. And, um, some people say I, I might be a masochist for this because it's kind of like hard looking at professionals and people who are millions and millions and millions of years ahead of you from your current, uh, skill set. And it's just like really hard just to swallow all that. And just looking back at your own work and just saying that it's like, it doesn't compare in any means to the imagination. But uh, the pros I like to talk about is that one, um, the best thing about comparing your work to other to others is that the fact that you can see what the bar and the level that you want to reach it, it gives you more of a guideline on where you want to go. Um, I I remember when I first started taking art a little bit more seriously because I went to school and I did the whole thing and I wanted to be an animator and then um, wondering how come I'm not getting any like callbacks or I'm not getting my foot through the door and I thought it was just like oh it's mostly because the people you know this and the other and there's some truth behind that too but um, if your work was good from the first place uh, you would have got in anyway but just looking at other people's work, what they have in portfolio and stuff like that. Oh, actually, let me get rid of this thing here. I see it's like blocked what's in this presentation. All right, cool. So, um, where was I? Yeah, so I really got like an idea. Uh, thanks for the follow, my guy. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you, Kuma. Um, yeah, so I got like an understanding of the bar. I understand where my work needs to be and, um, looking at different artists and their skill sets, I tend to search for people who have somewhere close to mine or where I can see I'm like halfway towards or close to becoming. And, um, that helped me so much more into like finding hope. And it's just kind of like my mindset of saying like, this is, this isn't hopeless. Like there is a chance. <laughs> Thanks, Yukuma. Thank you. I like to to spread that positivity, you know, because it's so easy to get down in things and like just really get on yourself about like the negative side of life. But uh, moving on to like the next subject is that uh, the the you, like like I said, you can get the examples of the type of work you want to do, and what you want to try. So um, I wanted to be a concept artist and I didn't understand um, what type of work I should display for a portfolio or what I should do to present myself. Uh, I know James uh, is one of, the, one of the big teachers in this discord. He goes to a school dedicated to concept design. Uh, thank you Song for the follow. He's really big on concept design and he's all about presentation. like. Uh, I think in his opinion, there's no such thing as a bad drawing, but uh, it's all about how you presentate yourself. Thank you for the hydrate check, because I will talk forever <laughs> and not drink water. So let me get a couple slips here. Mm. Thank you, Nerf Finder. Oh, uh, Nerfinator. My bad. Or Nerfinator. <laughs> um. I don't know if it's was my Discord setting, but I was 
a bit loud for me. This is much better. Hope it's not a problem to listen from Twitch. Thanks for the class. No problem, man. Um, yeah, like it's either or. Um, if you want more of a real time thing, I know I have some type of delay when it comes to Twitch. But uh, if you want like the real time reactions, uh, you can turn on the Discord audio. Uh, thanks for the follow again, guys. Uh, it really helps us uh, mods out and um, helps the whole algorithm of all these social media platforms that um, and, and like just to get some type of traction. Uh, it's like really beneficial for us in some way. Um, I'm still new to the whole Twitch thing. I'm not haven't really used it to the fullest capabilities, but um, it's quarantine and we're all trying to do something about it. So the more support that we get from you guys, uh, that means we have a. Uh, we can open up more opportunities for us to keep doing things like this all the time. Um, Crump, uh, Crump Barry says, um, how, how do you gauge good you are? Uh, cause sometimes I feel like I'm the man I'm, I'm in the man. And the other times I feel like my drawings are shit. Um, there are good days and there's some bad days. I don't draw like amazing every day. Uh, I just think is that just by drawing in general, you can build up mileage and no matter what, like you will get to the place you're going to go. It's like going to the gym. So if you work out every day and like sometimes the workouts are like ass, it's butt cheeks and you don't feel that great, but uh, it still adds up to something. And I'm just always that positive believer that like with enough time and dedication, you can get to that point in place. Uh, which is where I'm going to lead at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, thanks again for the follow, Heiachi. Um, but again, moving on to what I was saying about James, is that he feels that um, there's no such thing as like a really bad drawing. It's all about the presentation. And it's really how you uh, wrap up your, your package and how you deliver it. And um, I've seen it from uh, all over on Instagram because I was... I was super big into Instagram. I was trying to figure out how it works and how do I get traction and how do I start freelancing and getting clients and start doing more commissions. And um, I've seen people whose art skill is not as, as not on the level of, of me, which is like slightly below, but I see them having so much success. And it's really just because how they package themselves and show off their work. But the way um, by comparing yourself to others, that's how you can see how you can start following that trend of how do you, you can present your own stuff, especially the people off uh, on our station, because they're they are the professionals. They've been in the industry for a long time and you're you're looking at what that time and experience has taught them and you can learn so much more from them. That's why I love comparing myself to others on our station. I'm going to take another sip of water as I move on to my third point on the pros. Okay. Um, so you can also learn what you should add in to your work and what you can take out from your work. Um, if you guys are familiar with Keenan Lafferty, um, he was one of the first uh, teachers on YouTube that said it was okay to steal from other artists because the thing is that everyone steals from everyone. Nothing is original. Like the last presentation I had, nothing is ever original. Uh, people just take what they like, the things that inspired them, and they remake it and make it their own. Uh, they just kind of build up from those ideas. So by looking at people like who are professionally doing this stuff as a living, and any type of field, you can see what they're doing differently that you are not. And if there's something that you like and you want to add, you can always add it in and make it your own. That's why I'm like I I, I just love staying on on uh, on our station. I, I love going around and I understand like oh okay like I want to develop more of a painterly style. So what am I missing in my style versus um, one of my favorite artists? Um, they have rim light. They uh, are really good at transitioning from their to, from their values. So knowing that, I look up tutorials and stuff on the things that I want to improve on, which would be uh, values and, and understanding light, uh, even uh, understanding how to draw materials and details. And uh, and uh, like with that, seriously, for like the past few years, I've just been like 
looking at professional work and trying to see what can I do to make my work look a little bit more professional. And if, I feel like if it wasn't for that, I'd still be shooting around in the dark and I wouldn't know how I like to really presentate myself very well on social media. A lot of times I am kind of lazy about it because I just want to like post things and let people know like I'm not about vanity. I'm all about showing everyone what I'm doing to get from point A to point B. I want to show people that um, everything I'm doing, even like the little like boring stuff, I'm doing shapes and and basic like drawing um, like studies. People don't like those things, but I want to make an archive so people can look back and then see it. But whenever I do want to make something like uh, professional looking and like actually have it t like be taken seriously, um, I would do those things. Like I'll put a gradient on top. Um, I really like like set up my post to be as a presentation. Um, my Instagram is the same name, Get Good Millhouse. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram, and like even DeviantArt, even though I don't post there, but uh, I literally use the same name for like all my social media um, sites. Um, now I'm gonna be moving into the next subject, which will be the cons. And I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the cons. Uh, thank you, Kuma. Uh, I will take a drink right now. Um, my dad is a loud talker, so um, I close my door. And I only have like one central point of air coming in my room. So like my room right now is already turning into a microwave. Oh my God. So guarantee you throughout this entire presentation on this class, you will see me get a little bit more wetter and wetter <laughs> and I'm gonna be dripping in like minutes. So um, yeah. So everything I'm drinking is probably like gonna go for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm moving on to the cons and uh, i think we all like understand what the cons are when it comes to comparison we always think about the worst you know where it's it's just so damn intimidating it's it's uh really hard to look at someone's work and then uh <laughs> look back at your own uh, it's like the old spice man or like look at your look at your man then look at me then look at your man again look at me again i'm better <laughs> and um yeah it's really heartbreaking at times but um this is the mindset that you need to like put away because um my thing is moving on to the next it's just moving on to the next thing it will be like the total mindset of the entire thing because it's so easy to put ourselves down and say that we can never get there. Uh, turn that off. And like my mindset idea would be. This isn't impossible. Um, getting to a certain skill level isn't impossible. If you like, I don't care how much you like anyone says that Kim Jong Gi is a god. Like, I don't care. Like. If he can do it, you can do it too. Like, there's literally nothing separating you from him. Like, I always make this argument all the time between everyone here in this Discord, even with a lot of the, like, the talented people here. And I'm like, dude, I, I just get excited because um, I I see what that person can do. And I'm like, wow, if that person can do that, I, I can totally do that too. I can totally do that. That means there's hope for me, especially um, knowing that a lot of the artists here are, are all self-taught. And they are so amazing using Blender and like learning how to really um, utilize the stuff that's around them, like YouTube and um, the infinite resources of the internet. It wasn't, we, we have it so easy now because it wasn't like that in, in the 1990s or uh, like the, the early 90s and the late 80s. Like it was, it was nothing like this. We, we didn't have an abundance of resources like this uh for people to get hired anywhere they have to send them a portfolio in the mail and wait for a response and judging on how much they have riding on this and how much anxiety they have doing these tests and like filling out these applications and showing off the work they will have to wait for like weeks to months to like actually hear something and then to be told like yeah um keep trying keep trying bud and um like even look at Jim Lee, he's an amazing artist for DC, DC and Marvel. He switched back and forth and 
for the most part, he taught himself. Uh, he looked at anatomy books, he studied from the masters, and he just kept on at it. He, like every year, he will submit his portfolio to DC or Marvel because he wanted to work in comic books so badly. He will receive the deny letter, and he was like, okay, I'm obviously not good enough, so I gotta keep on trying and keep on trying and keep on trying. And that's basically all it is with this mindset. So, like, if he can do it, you can do it too. I can do it too. Um, it's just like looking at someone else that's like in shape, really ripped, and he looks like this this person is looking like a, a porcelain statue. They just seem so perfect. That person is human just like me and you. They have they they're they're not perfect. They make mistakes all the time. And like I don't like my profile pic on Discord as much because it kind of say like it kind of seems like I'm bragging or boasting about like my body goals or whatever. But I literally started off 300 pounds. I was overweight, and I will look at all my favorite actors and stuff like that, and they'd be like so lean, so ripped, and I just started trying. I, I just started trying it, and um, it worked out for me, you know, and. And it's, it's so sad because it took me like three years to realize in the mirror, I didn't even know who the hell I was anymore. I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even look the same. I, I, I finally took the time to like actually take a deep breath and look at myself because I had image issues and I didn't know who I was anymore. And I'm, I'm just thinking as I'm driving to the gym, like if I put that much time and dedication into um, working out and figuring out what to eat and what to do to uh, lose fat and build muscle. If I could have like just took that and put it into my artwork, God knows what, where I could have been right now. And that's all I'm trying to promote in this channel that I know a lot of us are probably like low confident in our art abilities sometimes. And we just say, oh yeah, I suck. I just, I'm this, that, and the other, but you don't suck. You have the potential to be anything you want to be. And I feel like it's kind of sad because it gets kind of lost in translation as you grow up. I'm going to take this time to drink some water because I just said a mouthful. <laughs> mm. Thanks, Neoshock. Um, looking at the comments. Oh, man, thanks for the sub, man. Thank you, Hayachi. Um, you're, you're awesome. Um, just two more away and I'm going to start making some uh, emotes. Yeah, man. Um, I'll have you guys vote. On the emotes i think that would be fun thanks for the sub man i really appreciate it thanks for the follow too um kuma i am six foot nothing and um uh, crumpberry thank you for the thank you for the compliment so i'm just saying when one it's, it's so weird too because when people compliment me for my weight loss and stuff like that I don't see it as anything. I don't. I don't think it's like that big of a deal, until I I, I, tend, I tend to look at the fat photos of me. I'm like, okay, I guess that is a big deal. But the thing is, like, I don't feel like it's a big deal because you can do it too. I think anyone can do it, and it's all about instead of looking at the negatives, try to look at the positives. Um, thank you for the follow, Commando, and uh, song said, uh, "So much is mindset." Um, I find over time with ever more resources and community, at least corresponding with time invested with uh, what is feasible in their life, as it all varies vastly. Pencil on paper, steps in shoes, etc. And grants indeed. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's all about just getting yourself out of that negative loop. Um, moving on to the next next uh point would be uh that when you're looking at someone like fang zhu I, I when i first started taking art seriously i looked at fang zhu as my art god like i i'm i'm, I'm gonna be his silent disciple that he doesn't even know like he's in singapore and i'm all the way over here in america and he doesn't know my presence but i'm his silent uh student i'm a silent uh pupil and Hello, Riri. Thank you for coming in. Uh, she's one of the mods here. She's super awesome, super positive, and she's a big supporter of me. So uh, thank you again for joining, Riri. And um, 
yeah, I, I saw, I see most of these people on YouTube as my teachers. And, um, I, it, it's so hard too, because like you see him draw in his videos and his, <laughs> he'll talk about how he casually like, this is fun. This is fun. You're, you're drawing these things. And, uh, once you're done with your rough draft, it will look like this. And, <laughs> I'm finished with my rough draft, and I look at his, and I look at mine. I'm like, bro, there's something wrong. <laughs> like, I, you, they make it look so easy, and it's like, it just, it's kind of like, it's a downer at the same time. But then again, you always gotta look at it like this. Everyone starts their art journey at a different speed, a different time, a different pace. He was in this game, I think, way before, uh, like right at the start of the PlayStation One era. I didn't even pick up a pencil seriously until like high school. Thank you, Kuma, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the sub, dude. <laughs> awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, it's 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 so easy to compare yourself to these people, and it's like, come on, man. Like they've been in it for s such a long time. Even Kim Jong Gi. Whoa! Thank you, man. Thank you. I really I really appreciate the support, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, but uh, like I was saying, like it's so easy to compare yourself to these people that's in already in the industry because like they've been in the industry, they've been in it for like twenty plus years. And you know what? I, thank you again, uh, Kuma, because now I'm able to make more emotes and I do, I'm make some more this weekend and have you guys vote on it. How about that? Uh, I will if you guys type in the. Um, uh, explanation mark, uh, Millie Rock in um, the Discord server. I will have a, a poll, and you guys have to choose which emote that you guys would like to have on the, on the streams. Um, looking at some of those comments. This is emotes. All right, all right. I still want to attend FZD school across the world, but life goes splicing. It's so expensive. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, Song. I, I want to hang out with James, too. Like, He's learning so much, like a lot of cool stuff that I wish I got from my own art school. And uh, I will hydrate. <laughs> don't, don't worry. You know, I have uh, some, probably like some lukewarm carbonated water at this point, because my room is like a microwave. Oh, wow. It's even busy. Mm. Oh, God. Uh, tunked. It's true that anywhere you make it, you have to make bad art before you make good art. Yes, um, you have to make bad art. They say that there's over a thousand bad drawings in our hands and we just gotta let it free, you know? Just send them out to the wild. Like whenever you catch a Pokemon and you just get tired of that Pokemon and you're like, you know what? Go be with, her. Go be with your family out there. And that's how I feel about all my bad drawings. Go be out there with your ugly family. <laughs> Go, we go, we go be that cute, ugly family. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. But these guys, they they they've just been in the game so much longer, and it's uh, you should shouldn't you should never hold a candle to that. If anything, um, when you're looking at someone that's already experienced, you're like, yo, if you can get like this, I can get to that level maybe faster than him because, um, knowing that a lot of the people today, especially like these art like gods you know they'll, they'll have like these free resources and information on especially on youtube and you can learn these things way faster than they did at their age so uh again it's a beautiful time to be alive right guys uh thanks for the follow uh forest Aur aurelio forest uh thank you thank you um how long have I been drawing Hayachi? Um, it's always a, the the basic common. Um, no, you, you're gonna have to type in uh, Millie Rock in a Discord server. And if you guys are not a part of the Discord server and you guys are new here, join the Ethan Becker Discord server. It's an amazing community. Um, literally like uh, the best, the most active community of artists ever on Discord. Uh, I joined a lot of art discords over the, over the years and um, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, uh, my bad for the the link posting. Uh, you can post it 
in Discord, if you're in a Discord server, uh, if you're trying to. Oh, uh, okay. Don't worry about it. The Discord link is in is in my profile. Thanks, thanks. Oh my God, thanks for all the follows, guys. Thank you, Optical Snacks. Who else was there? Pop potatoes. Thanks. All right, cool. Crumberry. Damn, you guys are awesome. Um, moving on, moving on. I think I already beat that horse dead. I'm talking about uh, you know, people having experience and you guys got it. So, thing is, since we have all this abundance, abundant resources out there, and sometimes it's uh so um confusing, and um, there's so much to learn from. Oh, wow, 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 I was blowing up, guys. Um, thank you, Kazuma. And, uh, what's good? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, so all we need is a plan. And, uh, the best plan that I have ever came up with is, uh, just trying to understand what I want to do. All right. So the plan will be the homework assignment. So when i started taking art more seriously and i just want to know like where i fit on this whole scale this whole scheme of art Ooh. <laughs> awesome pop potatoes um so what you gotta do is acknowledge where you want to go and what you want to do if you already have an idea of what you want to do and what you want to uh try doing in art um that means the majority of the battle is done for you so therefore all you can do is look at the people ahead of you look at the type of work they're putting out and looking at uh what the minimum bar is and you can find that skill level like almost everywhere on the spectrum there are people that you wouldn't believe like like if they are lacking in some fundamental skill that you think that is like so like crazy that they missed it or like they don't miss hit that marker but yet they're working professionally in something that means there, there's a bar for you there goes your bar you know but if you want to you know work at double a AA or triple a places then you already know your bar right then and there especially if you go on uh, art station so first thing first understand where you want to go understand what you want to be and then from that point you know where you can go from there He's my neighbor like around the block. He's been like going hard with that bike. So um, what really helped me out a lot is that I made a goal board and I learned this from Nano. Um, I was Nano's uh, pupil for a little bit. Uh, and then uh, the Corona situation got a little bit more scarce and harder and uh, we had to like put a pause on that stuff. But uh, I think one of the best things that I've gotten some type of clarity from was making the art goal board. And I'll show you guys uh, the art goal board in a second too. Uh, I have it right now. I already have it up because I came prepared for once. <laughs> All right, let me uh, get that large enough. And uh, I'm pretty sure some of you guys, if you guys see me online before, you guys will see like my background and like what's all this all about. I'm gonna let you guys know uh, just right now. Uh, Song says, uh, for sure, even those with these new Twilight Zone, new or normal, apart from democracy crumbling, still cynical, optimistic, or consistent, decommodifying education, advances in medicine, bionics, and nano uh, <laughs> cellular repair, um, metaconjugal, metacognition, hopefully benevolent AI automation, <laughs> drugery, so much more, easy to lose sight. <laughs> You're right. And uh thank you, Cheesy. Thank you, Cheesy, for joining us. And and if you're if you're not in the Discord, the art Discord, I have the link in my uh about section, man. So yes, join. <laughs> so this is my art goal board. All right. I take uh what I want from certain artists and like these are people that I follow on a regular and like people that I, like that inspire me the most. And um, 
I have a category here called sketch. What do I want my sketches to look like? I have Yo Yo Shinari. He's a beast when it comes to animation. And like, I just love his drawing style so much. Then there's Ben Zhang. Ben Zhang, and like, he is also like another part of the Overwatch team that does a lot of the character designs and, um, and artwork for them. And I just, I'm in love with that team and stuff like that. Tina Wei. And, um, I have a style like where I'm trying to aim in the future of this year. And this thing can always change. Like I can have this up for a year. I can have this to six months to a year and I can just change it up again. So I have uh, Ben Zhang, Kui Fang, Wallop, um, Ming Chen Chen. He's really dope too. A lot of these people I found on, on, on art station. And then I have my artists, the, the, I have a sketch style quality and then the artist and the artists are like, my top favorite at the moment and my top favorite would be like nicola um on yeah nicola there's thomas you guys might know him as tavish and then i have wave blue wave blue uh he's also another member of this discord these guys inspire me to work hard and like you know and try to be better every day you need the link in the in the in the chat i can i can throw up the link right now Uh, I will post a video also um, on YouTube and it will be edited uh, and um, it would I think I'll have some more added bonuses on there like or uh, edit in a certain way where there's a little bit more content in there. Um, moving on to the next page. So this is just one art goal board I have made so far and I have more and they are from early sketches. Oh, I meant the thing that you have pulled up right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in the it's in the chat. So uh, I made another goal board for early sketches and what my early sketches should be. I I missed I didn't do this correctly, uh, uh, compared to Nano because even if I have the rough sketches of what I want my stuff to look like, uh, there's also people from uh, either Instagram, um, our station or uh, Pinterest, I should also write down all the artists' name on the board. So I can always remember them in my mind and always pull up their work whenever I need to pull up their work. So that'd be like the only difference that I'll say. If, you, if you're gonna wanna participate and make your own art goal board, uh, it would be something like this. And I have also have another video on YouTube that talks about this entire process. If you want more information, I'm just kind of like breezing through to let you guys know on how I stay on track to reach my goals and what I want to do. So I have uh, I have early sketches, late sketches, like how I want them to be right before I start uh, doing any type of painting or anything like that. Uh, I have my line drawing. I have line quality, the type of line quality I want to uh, obtain and the line quality I want to learn how to you know do. Then I have uh, also painting when it comes to realism, um, semi-real, and even uh, stylized. And uh, you can find this entire thing on uh, Instagram. And I, not Instagram, on YouTube. And it would, uh, it would be a full on breakdown on how I went about all of this. So that's about phase two on the homework. Just trying to know where you want to go, make an art goal board. Then three will be get organized and come up with a plan. So uh, Yami also recently, she is, I think this thing has just became a giant collab. <laughs> that, the entire thing has just been a giant collab and it's like kind of been like a team effort. So it's like a little, a little um, information from Nano, a little information from Tavish, a little information from Yami. And Yami, she made her own uh, version of like an art planner that you can use for yourself. And then I elaborated more on it and I started editing it myself to come up with like a basic idea. If I had to do it all over again and understand like what I'm trying to do or like the stuff that helped me get better, this is basically it for what I had when my life was crazy and I had to work a lot and I have a lot of time. But there's so much time frame on this and that's open because of the lockdown. But I think it's something simple enough that anybody can use and alter it for themselves. Mm. Ah, damn neighbors. 
Damn, they're man their bike. I, I think it's like a little kid on her bike too. That that's that's the thing. All right, so here's the art goal, uh, art goal planner, and this is a, I built this as like kind of a just a quick way of like how to improve or how I started to improve on my own when I was self-taught. So um, my time frame will like vary from when I started. Let me take a minute to look at the chat. This is um. Cheesy says, I'm a beginner artist and want to improve, but I have a hard time doing the same thing for a long time without getting bored. Yeah, I get you. So I was wondering what are like different fundamentals to practice back and forth and when you are new. All right. Um, I also think I, I have a video that I'm editing right now about it too, but it, it's really up to you. It's on your own speed level and your own way you want to do it. Uh, I can elaborate more uh, probably like at the end of this. I'll probably show you like the different type of fundamental stuff that I do, but fundamentals I don't spend more than like two or three hours on or anything like that. Uh, sometimes my sessions to do fundamentals would be like between 25 minutes to 45 minutes. Optical snacks. So do you think it's okay and people will stick around if you mix up your style a lot with the painter such cartoony such realistic? I love all of it and I don't want to limit myself, then just do what you want to do, man. Like, if anything, you're not doing it for the people, just do it for yourself. And then if there's, and I don't think there's anything wrong with um, mixing up styles, because I don't think I have a consistent style at all. People say I have a style, and I'm like, where? You know, just like, like anything else, you know? So um, just do do what, what makes you happy. And I, that's going to be like the main part about this too. If you do what makes you happy, the better your art's gonna look because you're not doing it with some type of um, regret or some hostility towards it. You're you're doing it because it makes you happy. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, I don't think it's cheating if you're tracing a pose, but if you are, but if if let's say. There's a way, like, if you keep on tracing poses, it could be a crutch for you. And, I, and a lot of people here on this Discord are trying to avoid anyone entering in a crutch. So I say if you're on a deadline, if you got to, like, push something out, uh, tracing a pose it just speeds up the process. There's no copyright on the pose. Um, but you got to make sure, like, don't let it be that crutch that you always fall back on. Um, a lot of people professionally like trace poses just to speed up the workflow because they know what they're doing. They can sit down and like draw it, but if it's already done for them, like it, like why waste time? And uh, the reason why they say tracing is okay is because of that time limit that they have to turn in work and do stuff. But if you have the time to like draw out the pose, draw out the pose. And if you are struggling with the pose itself, uh, if you're gonna trace the pose, try to learn from that pose that you're tracing. Uh, hopefully I'm making sense, you know, but uh, moving back to this art planner here. Um, so judging on the time you guys wake up, I'm not sure if you guys have a mess up sleep schedule. This is something that I made up. Like if I had my sleep schedule perfectly, you know, perfect. Like I, I go to bed at 10 PM because I want to sleep as much as I can because Fun fact is that if you guys are really studying hard and trying to get better at your craft, sleep is the most essential thing ever. Like, I don't care if anyone here says that sleep is for the weak. Like, bro, if you're not sleeping, that will make you weak. Because <clears throat> when you're sleeping, your brain is dumping out a bunch of toxins that it builds up in a day. And the more sleep that you get, the more you're able to retain the information that you are getting. Um, this was an advice that I heard from a med student and going into the medical field is hard. There's a lot of studying on top of that. There's just so much they have to like cram to pass these tests and make and pass the bar and, and get their licenses or, or get the degree so they can start working at, in the medical field. So sleep is such an important thing, especially if you want to, um, stay strong when it comes to studying and learning things. Uh, song says, I loathe the paradox of sleep. Needing it to be productive, 
though not producing when sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you, I get you. But the thing is, sleep is not your enemy, man. Sleep is not your enemy. Um, if anything, what I, people like to say the term that life is short. Life is not short, it's life is long. Life is only short to the people who wants to believe that it's short. But there are people who really outlive their years, you know. Um, 40, being 40 years old, being 50 years old, being 60 years old, 70, that's not old. Um, I, my idea of old is about 80 to 90 to 100. So the point where your family has to take care of you because you cannot uh, move anywhere and stuff like that. Um, dying at 60 is still like literally labeled as dying very young. But and just imagine being 60 years old. That means you had 60 years on this planet. Bro, just imagine like most of that time you spent those 60 years is doing something that you're that makes you happy, especially drawing and stuff. Of course, you're going to get to that goal. So sleep is not the enemy, man. It's just you got to be consistent about it. Yeah, naps are totally fine. Uh, Tunked, our problem at the moment moment is that for all I have gotten a lot more knowledge in, on drawing and I love it and I can't get myself to put my pen to a metaphorical paper per se. I literally stared at a blank screen all day yesterday trying to get back into drawing after a few years is a hard as hell. And um, Thunked, uh, my my thing I would say to you is you got it's it's uh it's the amount of pressure that you're putting on yourself. You're stressing yourself out over the thought that you have a blank screen. Uh, if you're are if you're working digitally, um, you know what you could do to make it feel a lot easier on yourself. Uh, turn the white background into something gray because the white light is blinding and kind of like disorienting in some type of way. That could be a reason of it building up some type of stress because visually it hurts especially if you're in a dark room and you're looking at a white background or a, a white black a blank screen it, it visually hurts so if you dim it down throw on like a gray background and draw on top of it then i think that is like a beautiful way to start and then again start actively drawing like don't even think about what you're drawing just start actively drawing just move your pens around i had moments in time especially in the twitch streams where i literally had no motivation to draw anything like concrete all I did was doodle random poses and I had way more fun doodling random poses than trying to come up with something like that put everything I learned to, to like the test. Um, so a quote says, uh, do you have any suggestions on how you, to balance practicing your art and doing uh, and going to school at the same time? I just started going back to school and I wanted to make time for work on my art more than I want the previous and I'm worried that I'll burn myself out working on both and I don't want to stop doing art completely. Yeah, man, um, that's what I'm going to finish explaining on this entire uh, beginner guide to scheduling. And like my idea of my ideal way of trying to get better over an incremental amount of time by studying and also doing fun work at the same time. Um, so I'll get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> the way, uh, the way going on to uh, medicine and tech, dying, to, <laughs> dying young looks to be a hundred before I realized. All right, okay. <laughs> no problem, Val. Uh, Queen of Queens. Oh my goodness, this is making me feel awful. I feel like I just wasted my time drawing stuff and I haven't actually improved my craft. And it's okay, like mileage is mileage. You're still getting drawing mileage. Like I've drawn a bunch of stuff and I didn't like really, um, really take the time to like learn stuff. I, uh, I, I remember a lot of times before people say like, damn, you draw really quick because all I could do at the time was draw like really quickly. And I was just drawing stuff that I found fun so uh, I still like some type of, you know, merit to like just drawing in general. Okay, so going back to the art planner, um, I basically set up like four different goals. Um, number one would be fundamental practice and that's gonna be in the blue around the 8 a.m. 
whenever you wake up and you're ready to start doing work, the first thing I'll say to do is do the hard stuff first. Because once you're done with the hard stuff, like it's like just like working out. Like after I'm done working out, I don't care what happens to me at that day, at the end of that day. Like I literally destroyed myself. I can go to work and my boss can yell at me for some stupid, and I wouldn't care because the hardest part of my day was already over. Like I'm, I'm just chilling. So um, I'll say before you start working on anything fun or taking the time to like you know just really chill and relax. First things first is do some fundamental practices. I'm talking about like your straight lines, your circles, your ellipses, um, a little bit of perspective maybe, draw your cubes, draw your boxes, do some shading, whatever you need to do. Do that for at least like 25 minutes to an hour or something like that, really up to you. You can just make it as long as you want, but I'm not saying that you should do your fundamentals for six to eight hours. There's some of us in here that will practice our fundamentals all day before drawing anything for ourselves or anything for fun. And that's really not the way how you can like go about it. You know, you you want to enjoy this. You don't, you don't want to hate this. I like how space uh, goes out with emphasis on the grindy bits first. Yeah. Goal tool, goal tool. This is what I made up for myself that I really like enjoyed. Now I feel like it helped me a lot as well. Is that um, the top the the subject that you want to improve in? Like, like I can't draw hands or I want to learn how to draw clothes or shoes or whatever. Learn the things that you want to learn. Um, there's no other, there's, there's, I don't think there's any better way of like learning except for looking for the stuff that you want to learn. I was never a, a student in school. I was mostly C and I was just trying to like pass. I was just trying to like get out as easy as possible with the least amount of work. Anything that they threw in front of me in school, like history, math, or history and stuff like that. Like I couldn't find a flying fuck to give about those things. And um, and I just kind of like sat there and did bare minimum subpar work. But if you told me that I had to learn geometry at the time to do art, and if you explained on how I use geometry to do better art, I will sit down and learn it. Like I was only interested in art at the time in high school and college and stuff like that. I didn't care about anything else. All the subjects can like be pushed away, but you know what you want to learn. So just understanding what you want to learn and just looking for those inf for that information, you can learn that thing a lot better because you're more interested in finding that information for it at all, you know, or in the first place. Uh, take some time to read the chat a little bit, drink some water. I did that before I ended up burning out to find out when I found out drawing again and got back into it. You get excited when you see the results for your practice. Yeah. Uh, then my last goal, uh, not my last goal, but goal three will be like the last like hard thing you have to do. All right. Goal three would be, um, Okay, so there's there's something that you suck at, and then there's something that you... Okay, I got them mixed up. So there was something that you want to learn. So I guess goal two or three, it could be either change either way. But something that you suck at. Like, find something that makes you so uncomfortable and try to master that thing. Um, the only reason why I say look for the things that you suck at... Like, let's say if you're bad at perspective or bad at anatomy or you're bad at certain things of like of something and it makes you uncom uncomfortable drawing those things, that means like your brain is trying to keep you safe from doing from doing all the hard stuff. So what you want to do is break through that habit of trying to always stay safe. For you to grow, you need to do the things that make you uncomfortable. Just like anything else in life, when you get a new job, it's so uncomfortable because you're new and you don't know if you're gonna like if they're gonna like you or if you're doing things wrong. You're afraid of like uh, the judgment from your bosses and stuff like that. You're, you're you're just really trying to get the hang of this new place, and your brain is like having you fixate on all your small little mess ups. So you you kind of like start second doubting yourself and like you start getting paranoid about everything that you're doing because your brain really loves the comfort zone and. And it's always there to keep you safe. It's your it's your brain's job to keep you safe all the time. Um, even like hate to like bring this up again. Like it's like working out. It's hard at first 
and your body's yelling at you saying, I hate it, this sucks. Like, why are we doing this? We should just like stop working out. Just go back to Wendy's, get ourselves a triple baconator, sit down on a couch and we just watch anime again. Like, can we just do that for the hour and a half that you spend in the gym? Like, I think that'd be so much better. So just by using that as an example, that's basically uh, doing something that you suck at. So if you suck at perspective and you, and you want to get better at these things or you need to get better at this perspective, it's, it's a common thing that people tell you that you're lacking in. Go ahead and do it. I've done this thing where I, I drew things that I sucked at. Like I drew uh, buildings, vehicles, uh, lizards and animals things that i found <laughs> like really frustrating drawing and i did it for like a month straight I, I i did like uh bad things i sucked at for a month straight after a while probably like day 10 or day 15 into drawing the things i suck at and i was doing it in pen eventually it gets better like you don't care anymore and it gets easier and easier by every passing day and um, it's it's crazy cool because you at the end of the month, you see from how bad you were when you first started and how good you are at the end of the month. So um, that's one of the biggest ways how I started improving in my own art style and my own artwork and stuff like that. It's just do the stuff that I suck at, do the things I want to learn and always practice my fundamentals. The first thing before starting, that's what will be my warm up all the time. Then after that, from 12 to 2 i put break time you already did the hard stuff pat yourself in the back give yourself a nice round of applause treat yourself make it enjoyable do these three things do the thing that you want to do the most either if it's playing video games or watching your favorite show or watching a movie um you can take this time to like eat something or uh play magic the gathering something you can do something fun in between that time but then once you're done with your break, because you don't want it to be an all-day thing, you know, you still want to be uh, on top of the subject of getting better at your artwork. So in uh, last week's class, uh, like discussion, I was talking about coming up with projects to help you get better and how to improve yourself over time. Um, this is where you can apply the, the scheduling for your project. Uh, I blocked out about four to five hours on um, your project. And to make this something super easy that anyone else can do, let's say, uh, just for me, let's say if I was gonna do an animation or something, or if I was gonna do a web comic and I wanna establish all my things, right? Uh, day one, and that'll be on Monday, I wouldn't be drawing as much. Day one, I would do research. So I'll research the things that I'm, I want to add into my story, things that I want to have in the environment, um, stuff for my characters, like, uh, either some clothes and stuff like that. And, um, I'll do a lot of research on these, on these materials and stuff. And then, uh, also I'll get reference, uh, reference images. So stuff I can use the next day. Uh, if you spend the time to like gather everything that you need the next day, you already know where to start. Uh, I feel like a lot of us, we, when we start making our characters, we don't look at reference. We don't get poses. We don't uh, get clothing material. We don't uh, get the, we, we have like a vague idea of like what our character is going to be doing and what they're going to be living in and what type of environment. But we don't know what that environment will look like. We don't know what type of transportation they use. They don't know about the culture of that environment. So by doing all your research first prior before you start would be the best thing you could ever do before you start anything. Day two will be Tuesday. After doing your fundamentals and all your stuff, your break, uh, day two, you would be working on your project again. And this time you'll move on to rough sketches. So you're just doing some thumbnails, like really rough stuff, stuff that you can see. You don't have to show anyone. This is all for you. You're doing rough sketches to a point where like I might take a few of these ideas and like move them on to the next stage of my process, which be which will be on day three, which will be Wednesday. Uh, you will start doing, um, you'll, you'll finalize your rough, your rough and you start doing some lines and then maybe flats. You get to a point where you start doing lines and flats and then you can stop right there. You're not trying to finish it. You're not You're not trying to render it. If you are gonna render it, that's gonna be day four. That's when you finalize everything and make a nice presentation out of it. By 
uh, approaching your projects like this on step-by-step -step phases, um, it really helps get the process down on the, like how you're taking your, your project too. Like you're not trying to do it all in one day. You're not trying to make a, a pretty illustration every day. You're just trying to work on one singular thing in a span of a week. I have an example here. Um, This is this is my 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 thing. So, I'm showing you guys what I'm working on. Uh, I brought it up this morning because I wanted to like fix some aspects of it. And um, this illustration took me. It's going on a month and some change now, and I only worked on this thing one day out of the entire week. So every Thursday, I added something and something and something and something to it. So uh, I brought it from rough. I did the lines, I did the flats. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will see like the post I had for it. And normally I wouldn't take this long on a project, but I started breaking it down into like days, like not days, but like weeks. But in this, in that time of working on this illustration, and yes, that, that is hard from Persona 5. But um, in the time of me working on this, once I was done for that day, the entire week before touching this thing again, I was studying how to render basic shapes. I was understanding uh, color and light. I was trying to understand um, different um, painting techniques. And these things came in handy for whenever I wanted to move on to the next phase when it came to illustrating this. So this is what I mean by having your fundamental stuff before you start working on your serious stuff or your own projects. Thank you, Drowen. Thank you for the follow, my guy. My guy. If you're new here, uh, welcome. We're having a class from the Ethan Becker Discord, and uh, always feel free to join in. And uh, thank you, Kawachi. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But this is what I'm talking about. If you have a project, and if you have a study guideline of what you want to like, all the subjects that you want to handle and do you can take your, your project into phases and then apply those things that you're learning already into it. And then going back to the schedule, you have the entire rest of the night of Friday, totally free. You don't, you don't have to work on your, uh, your project. It's a four day process. If you want to repeat it again, like, okay, I'm going to try to do goal, goal four, uh, step zero, on Friday and continue it, you can. But you have all this free time on the side here. Yeah, Friday, you have the weekends open. That, you can do whatever you want. If you, Let's say if you made it into a game. Let's say you did all your fundamental practices, um, you did everything you wanna learn, you did the things that you sucked at, and then you worked on your project for those four to five days, right? The weekend, you can treat yourself to something nice. You can do something that you want to do or something. You can play a video game. You can do fan art. You can do a draw this in your own style. Whatever you want to do, the world's your oyster. Because you know why? You did your work. You did your homework. And this is personal stuff that makes you feel good anyway. So you are doing more of that. And after that, you just chill out if you want. Because I understand that a lot of us are not in that hustle mentality mainframe. Uh, I remember uh, one of you guys said you want to go to FCD and the entire like workload for FCD is super hustle minded oriented. So if you're a really a hard worker, you can keep on completing this until the end of time. But if you are trying to casually get better and have fun, this is the type of um, board I imagine would be for me. If I still want to have fun and I wanted to like get better and have fun with my own stuff, this is the type of schedule I'll make. And, um, you can find a downloadable uh, planner on my Gumroad. I'll even post it here. And I'll also post it in my um, corner in Discord. Uh, actually, let me get that up again. Copy. And I will paste that there. So I already have it up. You guys can download that whenever you want. I'll post this up in the Megamind corner too. And um, that is it for today's class. Um, I said I was gonna show you some fundamental stuff, right? 
that you can uh, try practicing every day and like changing it up whenever it starts to feel stale, right? Let me, uh, there you go. And uh, let me take the time to look at a couple of these comments. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I was like into the zone and I didn't see a lot of the comments. Mm, I'm the opposite of horde references and I have no clue where to go from there. <laughs> uh, also removing distractions, I am learning that the hard way. Yeah, you want to have a work environment that's not surrounded by distractions. A clean room is like a clean mind um, as well. Uh, weird thing is I never spent more than 10 to 20 minutes on a drawing. Well, drawing, are you drawing something that you really enjoy or you're just drawing stuff just to draw? Uh, from Barry in UX, this was called It's Rate of Design. Nice. And no problem song. All right, man. Yeah, so if you're if you're taking this doodle and you're making it with a purpose, I think if you're like working something with a purpose, I think you'll find yourself spending hours into something because surprisingly, I could get lost in my own work, literally, and not look at my phone, not talk to anybody, miss like 10 to 15 phone calls and, and text messages, like literally get up, look around like oh man i am kind of tired and look at the time it's like 1 to 2 a.m uh, so i'm pretty sure if you like spend the time to work on something a little bit more serious or gears towards something i i think you will find it uh, a lot easier to spend more than 10 to 25 minutes on a drawing 10 to 25 minutes you can spend that on like on learning and stuff like that because uh, we have really short attention spans <coughs> Uh, what do you recommend for someone who can only draw what they see? Um, try to break down what you draw uh, from what you see into into basic shapes. <clears throat> I'm sorry for coughing, but um, but understanding that everything is made out of shapes, you get to associate all the things that you see into shapes. So even looking at someone's arm, you can see that this arm is made out of like a tubular shape. And then you can start constructing from there on your own, from your mind. But I also believe that everyone should also use reference too. So there's nothing wrong with like using reference and only drawing what you see too. Drawing no problem. And um, won't let you download from Gumroad. I need to put in my address in the country drop down. It gives me nothing. What the hell? All right. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna try to see what's going on with that. Mm. I'm trying to combine what you see. Just cool poses and pictures and take pictures of work. All right. Um, let me show you guys um the different type of of I guess uh, practices you can do for the fundamental stuff. And I I do this like every morning. Uh, let me get my brush. All right, I got ink. So everyone should know this. Like you have your straight lines and you try to do them as straight as possible. Um, I would do it with the pen and pencil. But you can also do it digitally too. I think there's nothing wrong with that. So you just try to do straight lines as straight as possible. <sighs> and you can do it from long to medium. even smaller Just try to get them as straight as possible so you always have this practice you can do every day um, there's also accuracy lines too so if you make a dot here dot here and you're trying to connect a line and have them touch these dots right Oh, already bad. Ah, stop short. Ah, 
<laughs> I'm bad at this. It's so bad. But this is a uh, this will teach you accuracy. All right. You can do that even straight lines going downwards. And it's okay if, if like if they come out really bad like don't even worry about it because this is like literally nothing it's just a a practice think of it as like your your stretch before you start working out uh what would you suggest for a conciliating conciliating that schedule and a job i work in a restaurant not in u.s so no quarantine for me. Uh, so what you'll do is that you will, what, um, I had a, like another class about this, about time management and I was saying how much time you have in a day. So once you find out um, <clears throat> how much free time you have, and that's when you can like, okay, I can allocate 10 to 25 minutes doing like fundamentals. If I have an hour left out of that, out of that I could even spend it doing uh, 25, maybe 30 minutes on each subject, 30 minutes drawing something that I suck at and 30 minutes that I want to get better at. And um, after that, whatever time is left, you do the things that you love the most. Because when I had to uh, work and, and everything was open and there was no Corona, uh, my studying and stuff like that was like drastically cut. I was studying for even shorter amount of time. I was drawing for even shorter amount of time. I took whatever time I had that was open in a day to start drawing the stuff that I liked and stuff that was geared to my project. And that's why I felt like also contributed to like my artwork looking even better and better because it was making me happy as I was doing my own thing. So uh, I'll say you take the small amount of time you have to like, yeah, you can get a study in. Like a tutorial is only like 10 to 15 minutes, like a lesson on YouTube. And then you can just uh, take the 10 minutes left or 15 minutes left and like practice it just a little bit. And then you can make that into a thing for like the entire week. Uh, Crumber, uh, Crumberry, how long do you draw in a day typically? Um, it, it varies to be honest. Like I could draw all day, but then I have like, I make content. I do a lot of video editing. Um, I'll probably spend like either six to seven hours drawing. Um, that's, that's now though. Back then in a day, probably way less like three to four hours. Thank you for the hydro check. I'm, uh, I am don't know if I have any water. All right, I got some water. Uh, you can, I oh mean, I am like sweating so bad. This is like the worst shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is like, you I don't know if you guys can see the stains. I got some stains already. <laughs> um, I think Dropbox is fine. <laughs> I don't think I can ever overhydrate because like I'm sweating it all out as we talk and every time I take a sip, it's like already coming out my like armpits. Um, I'm not done with the fundamentals, by the way. This is just like a basic little warm up, you know. Um, also, I have um, after this, I would do boxes in perspective, and I would I would make these boxes with no fear. Like I don't care how bad they are. Like I'm drawing boxes. I don't care. Like. What I'm trying to teach myself is confidence. And it's just like draw a box. You can draw them in like in an all following a certain perspective or a guide or something. And then um, later on, after I'm done drawing boxes, I will like make little cuts in them too. I would uh, pretend like, okay, this is its own thing. It's coming down like this. And it's a little something in here. Mm. 
no, no, no. There you go. Something like that. Now race the little insides here. And then now it's its own little like complex shape. I can even like put holes in them. I can add to them. I can add like other shapes on top of them or something. Then um, after boxes, I will probably would do circles. You can try doing a circle as slow as possible. Or you can just try to do them as fast as possible. Try to change up the, the speed. You can find like doing them smaller and, and slower, it's it's hard. It's hard. But doing them fast, you can do them you can make them look really good fast, but the accuracy would be gone. Alright. And there's so much more you can do. And then like with this stuff that I'm showing you guys, you guys can like just really like mix it up however you want to in the mornings. Uh, what else? Uh, I think you and some other teachers will be personally responsible for the ascendancy in the next gen of art. <laughs> yeah, man. Cause I, I feel like this is like information that should just be accessible or people should talk about it as a lot more um all right again uh i'm gonna i'm gonna practice my my ellipses I, this is the hardest thing I, I this is the hardest thing that i can ever like wrap my mind around it's uh it's not even like a mind exercise it's just like more of a like a skill you know just trying to get ellipses right It's uh, drawing a like uh, a circle in perspective. You can do it um line here. Circles and ellipses. You're gonna you guys are gonna find yourself that you guys are gonna be doing this shit for like ever. But again, like don't. Don't mind how bad they are. Just keep trying because you will get better over time. You can do them as small as possible or as, as big as possible. Like, again, this is just a warm up. Like, I am just warming up my hand. Right before I start drawing, I start doing stuff like this. You know? Uh, another practice would be uh, if you was uh, around Tavish. I think Tavish also did this. You can do a little accuracy test. Gosh, yeah, I'll put it down here. And you'll go from here. Make sure you hit in between. And your goal is to make sure that you always hit the intersecting points here. You can do that for accuracy. Another uh, fundamental practice you can do in the morning is that you can make these random shapes, right? and try to make a, um, what's it called? Turn it into like a, a 3D form. Like how would it be in, in 3D space? Just like if it was doing a sphere, right? How is this sphere bending in 3D space? Or, like, I even do this for armor. Like, if this was a some type of shoulder pad or something like that. 
It's like a really poor excuse for armor. <laughs> but this is uh, going to teach you form. Um, what else is there? You can also practice your basic shapes, your basic geometric shapes. Like, uh, you have your combs. You have your combs. And then you have um, your cylinders. Um, what else? You already have your cubes. And then you have your pyramids. Your triangles. And there's so much more you can do. You can, like, shade them on a certain side or whatever. Oh, thanks for Hydrate. Uh, let me look at... You guys are talking about, uh... Some programs. Okay. <laughs> I really feel like you guys really care about my hydration. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm all out of water though. Uh, I can only drink so much. I will not go past the point where like it hurts. Okay, like let's be realistic here. <laughs> mm. Mm. So um, where else uh can I also show you guys as a warm up? This is a fundamental. There's like so many I have done. But I think that should be enough. Like any more, I feel like it'll just be too much. Um, if you guys are familiar with Scott Robertson or Peter Hahn, they also have videos on dynamic sketching. <laughs> um, yeah, um, there's Peter Hahn. I know he has a couple videos online that talks about dynamic, dynamic sketching. And uh, I guess the fundamental prin uh, principles to do. Um, and he will also talk about the lines, straight lines, ellipses, and, and forms. Uh, but those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. So you can take any one of those things and like just you can make out you can make your own workout. Like take maybe three to five of the examples that I showed, and you can turn that into your own workout for the fundamentals uh, as you start your day as a warm up, and then move on to something that you suck at then do something that you want to learn. And after that, the whole day is fun. But um, that's it for the class. That's it for the stream. I'm okay. I, I'm trying to make sure like I didn't like go way over because I I know there's another class starting. But uh, right before I end the stream, I'll let, to, let you guys uh, get the floor here. Do you guys have any more extra questions? And um, let me know is like try downloading the link again and, and see if it works. Dude, my shirt is like completely drenched in sweat. It's like insane. It's gross. It's so gross. I don't feel like Spider-Man. I feel, feel like a wet Parker. <laughs> so uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, um, I'm going to call it a stream. And I will edit this class so I can put it up on YouTube later on. Uh, Song said it just from earlier about studying with documentaries and music with versus the music um I, honestly i work like the best when i'm vibing like if i put on some lo-fi hip-hop or whatever and it's like really really good 
it's it makes my day. Like I would normally start off my day and I'll I'll light a scented candle, put on some lo-fi hip hop, and I'll bust out like a couple pieces of paper and start doing my fundamentals. And it's like so tranquil. So tranquil. So whatever you whatever makes you feel good to to start drawing or gets you in that mood of like, you know, calm. Cause you don't want to be stressed out. You don't want to have anxiety when you're drawing. You want to reduce that as well as possible. So whatever that can get you into the mood of drawing, the better. Uh, I put it in the classroom chat and I will also put it in my uh, corner as well, hot potatoes. Uh, Noam says, dumb question, but is it necessary to step, and this, is it a necessary step or is it fine to skip doing gesture drawings of my main warm up? You don't have, like, you don't have to skip it. Like, whatever you find as a warm up, like, like, um, you can either do fundamentals or you can do gestures. It's just basically an example of what I would do. Um, I will switch up my fundamental practices, like, at, at, at random most of the day so because I, I want to keep it fresh but it's literally a blueprint on what you can do so if you feel like you want to work more on your gestures work on your gestures there's no harm in that uh if you want to work on your forms and stuff like that work on your forms no problem no problem no um And if you miss anything important, like, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, the replay of this stream will be on later after I end the stream. And then on top of that, I'm taking it and I'm adding it to uh, my YouTube. So I'm going to, like, do a lot of edits. I have a couple of videos to edit this weekend, too. Saturday's coming up. But, um, yeah. So if you guys are already subscribed to my YouTube, you hit the bell. Uh, I'm mostly going to be making videos straight from the Discord and add it there because I don't think I have the time to make content on the side, like some other content. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like one new piece of content per month. I don't know. I'm still working on the schedule on that. But uh, other than that, uh, that's it. You can find this on YouTube. All right. So... Um, I'm going to end the class now. I am going to change my clothes because I feel gross. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. And you guys have a good one, all right? Don't stress about it. Um, the, the guide is there. Um, there's also, uh, if you want to make a goal board, you can find that goal board video on my YouTube channel as well. No problem, guys. I'm glad you guys showed up, and I'm glad that uh, you guys got some type of insight or some type of inspiration out of this, and that can get you guys pushed to start doing um, your own stuff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm out.